Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, law of attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. If you are new to my channel, welcome. We do readings. I do page pulls from, from, from some of my favorite spiritual texts. We talk about manifesting and co-creating our desires. And I just spoke about this in one of my last videos that if you are here, and you found my channel and you're somebody who really desires to manifest a better life for yourself, you're already ahead of the game. And I want you to love yourself so deeply right now and be so grateful that you are who you are because the world is changing and the vibration on the planet is rising. And this is a huge time for us to understand that when we wake up in the morning, we don't even need to create a vision board anymore. We don't even need to journal. We can speak our day into existence. You can wake up tomorrow and I want you all to try this. Wake up tomorrow and say, universe, where will you have me go? What will you have me do? Who will you have me see? And what will you have me say? And open yourself up to be moved by your angels, by your guides, by the universe, to bring you to the, the things that are in your vortex, the things that you're desiring. Um, and when you, we open ourselves up to be moved, we get out of our own way. No resistance is there. And you can say, right after you do that little prayer, that mantra, you can say, universe, can you bring me like $200 today in a really cool way? Universe, can you connect me to somebody new that might help me get a better job? Universe, can you, and you just, and my throat chakra is going crazy. Anytime I have any kind of like movement in my throat, whether it's hiccuping or burping or whatever it is, this is a sign that you need to hear this message. So we're living in a time where there's chaos. There's a little bit of a recession going on, inflation, disease. We have to learn how to find peace in this chaos. And that's using this, knowing that we, the energy is still the same. We can still create good things, even though there's bad things happening on our planet. So you're already ahead of the game. High five yourself. Be so happy that you're here and you are who you are. Give my channel a like, subscribe. It would bring me so much joy to help as many people as I can to understand that they're on the right track and they're ahead of the game. And we can raise the vibration by helping everybody understand this. Your thoughts create your reality. So let's start off our weekly reading with the intention of wanting to ask the universe what we need how can we co-create in a better, more efficient way? That's the message I just got. I already opened up sacred space. I saged and, or I Palo Santoed my entire body, the cards, my books that I have here. And I felt like doing it on the floor today because I was already filming a couple other videos. So I have everything set up. Let's start with an animal card and let's see how we can co-create in a more efficient way. What message do we need to hear universe for this week? First week in August, it's my birthday month. I'll be 40 on August 19th, you guys. Okay, <laughs> the bumblebee, we need a vacation. You're overworked, you're tired, it's okay. In order for us to co-create, we have to rest. It's okay to take time off. I don't know about if you guys know this, but my mentor taught me that there's something called, it might sound negative, but it's not. There's something called astral hell. <laughs> it sounds really negative, <laughs> but it's 60 days, 30 days before your birthday, 30 days after your birthday. So for me, my birthday is August 19th. So the 30 days prior, which lead into right now and the 30 days after are a very sensitive um, cocoon like energy for me. I am irritable more than normal. I am more likely to get sick or prone to like having a surgery. Uh, our bodies are like really, really sensitive during this buffer this time. And I don't know why, but apparently if you go, I've gone and done this. If you go to a cemetery, when you're visiting a loved one, go look at all the headstones, look at the dates. They always tend to pass away around the time of their birthday. And it's this period called astral hell. And we have to, my mentor taught me, she's like, don't ever schedule a surgery. Don't schedule any doctor doctor's appointments around your birthday. <laughs> just kind of lay very low. If you're in business, try to under schedule yourself. And I've noticed already in the past week, I've needed so much rest. I feel exhausted. Um, even just a client texting me and asking me for a session makes me feel overworked <laughs> and they're just asking, 
but I just feel so energetically drained. And I think it's because I'm in my astral hell. So I have to under schedule myself, which means I have to like make less money. And then that adds stress. So anyway, you're overworked. So this message is for all of us, take a vacation, take a nap, you don't have to do so much. And if we are resting, guess what happens when we rest? We co-create better because we don't have so much resistance in our body to what we're doing in our everyday life. Our vibration will be higher when we're not receiving a text like I was feeling so gassed and cooked and tired. Okay. So our first message is take a vacation, rest. You're allowed to, I'm giving you full permission. Ooh, I also brought my charms. So we're going to pick a charm or two or three. I also have my dream book here. So we're going to interpret some dreams for you guys. We're going to spice this up. Okay. We have the cat, a star, a turtle, and a fish. So the fish represents being in the flow. So you're in the flow. You are seeing the signs. You're seeing the angel numbers. You're getting all this confirmation back from the universe. And it's good. Don't question it. Don't ask why it's happened. God in the universe is just trying to get your attention. And if you want to talk back to God in the universe, all you have to do is change up your routine. Do something different to let the universe know that you're willing to be flowy and flexible and you're willing to go with the flow. Don't be so rigid. When you are rigid, you are not in the flow. Okay. So I feel like the fish is here to remind us to be different. Don't be so pattern and, um, disciplined with your schedule. Just say, I'm just going to be super flexible this week and do things so different. Okay. Even if it's something as simple as cooking different meals, we have the turtle slow and steady wins the race. I just did a Patreon post about patience and persistence. We have to have patience on this journey. Okay. So this week when we want to co-create more efficiently, patience is key. And that is like the bumblebee. We have to rest. Oh, and I just got a message that the bumblebee might be a message for somebody else who, who's lost a loved one. I know my dad always sends me bumblebees because when I was like uh, in middle school, I guess it was middle school and high school. And I, for some reason, I remember in high school more, but my sister and I shared a room. We were one year apart. There was four of us total, three girls, one boy. And my one sister was in college. And then there's three of us in high school at the same time. And me and my sister shared a room and my dad would come in in the morning and he would be our wake up call. And it would probably be like 6.30, 6.45, and he'd come in and he would buzz in our ears and he would use his mustache to tickle us. And it was like the softest, sweetest way to wake up in the morning. Because most parents as teenagers are like, get up, it's time to go to the school, stop oversleeping. But my dad was so gentle. He made the small moments so enjoyable and cute and sweet. So the bumblebee is a message from a loved one out there that might've passed away. Um, so I'm sending you so much, so much hugs, <laughs> so much love and hugs, um, from your loved one to you. Then we have a cat, which represents speaking your truth. Do not hold back. Tell those people how much you love them. That was the one thing my dad always did. He always, always spoke his truth. He was always willing to be vulnerable and to say, he would call me, my family calls me shush. He would be like, shush, you have the key to my heart. I love you so much. I'm so proud of you and what you're doing in the world. He just always told me how he was feeling. And that's the kind of energy we all deserve and need. Okay. And then we have a star and the back of the star says just for you. So this means you're either wishing upon a star, you are a star and you're shining bright in your world. Or it means that <laughs> I just heard that you swallowed a bunch of stars and that's how much you're glowing. <laughs> But I also see this as like with co-creating, if you're focused on one star in the sky and how your, how your manifestation is going to look, there's could be a million possibilities. The universe might bring you, say you're asking for like $50,000 and you're looking at this one star going, okay, I could get $50,000 from my business. That's how I'm going to get it. But there's like a hundred billion other stars in different ways you could get $50,000 from the universe and the universe decides that for you. You know, it could be, there's so many different things. You could find a diamond ring on the ground that could be worth $50,000 and you take it to a pawn shop. You could get an inheritance somehow. You could get um, somebody's pension who's passed away. Um, 
there's so like insurance money, whatever it is, you know, like something, God forbid something happened to your house or to your car or something. And all of a sudden you get this insurance check and you're like, oh, I can now get a better house, a better car, whatever it is. That stuff happens all the time. When you wish upon a star and ask for $50,000, don't think about how it's going to come. Just know that there's a million possibilities as there are stars in the sky. And that's how we manifest. We open it up and we say, I don't care about how or when, I just want the $50,000. Okay, charms are fabulous. Let's do another animal card for this week. Thank you. We have this squirrel. <laughs> I know so many people that are scared of squirrels. And this is so funny. In the past two days, I've gone on like three different walks, one in the morning, one at night, and then one this morning. And I've seen two bunnies and both bunnies Sorry, my legs are falling asleep. I was sitting on my knees. I love sitting on my knees. Um, I had two bunnies that totally did not move as I was walking by them. They just sat there. And then I saw one squirrel this morning that also didn't move. He was just sitting there eating his little food. I was like, hello, little buddy. So animals are sensing your, if that's happening to you and you're, you're out in nature and all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, like this animal's not leaving. They're like, okay with me being here. That's because your energy is magnetic and they're not scared of you and it's loving and it's peaceful. Okay. We're going to do a card from my deck that could be purchased on my website. It's called the ever unfolding heart. What message do we need to hear about co-creating this week? Maybe what are we co-creating? Okay. Change is coming. It's a good change. Feel the anxiety question mark. See it as excitement. Okay. That's confirmation that something is coming this week, some sort of change. And maybe you're needing to rest prior to that, or maybe a vacation's coming that you don't know of. Maybe somebody's going to surprise you with a trip. Um, and I didn't even say what the squirrel means. The squirrel means spiritual maintenance, be your own caretaker. So take care of yourself. Nurture yourself. Gather your acorns. Okay. Um, let's do tarot. All right. What message do we need to hear? Thank you. Okay, six of wands or six of fire. Victory, wise choices that bring public recognition and success, promotions, awards, and, or scholarships. So somebody is gonna be in the spotlight this week. Maybe this is the change that's coming. Um, maybe you're gonna receive some sort of abundance from this recognition that's gonna give you an opportunity to go on a vacation and that's the change that's coming. And you're gathering your nuts and your acorns and your, your money to, to go on this adventure. But usually the six of wands, six of fire is like, you're in the spotlight. It's usually a girl standing up like, yes, she's in the spotlight. She's being seen. So for me, when I get this card, I always think about like my YouTube channel blowing up and I wake up one morning and there's like 200 subscribers or something. I often am always visualizing that before I go to bed. I'm like, man, wouldn't that be so cool if I could reach so many people with these readings and my manifesting lessons? You guys, imagine if we can get the whole world to believe in the universe and to trust when bad things are happening or when they're having that anxiety and we can all be there to help them and say, hey, it's okay. That anxiety means something good is coming. Change is coming. It's okay to rest. You can take off of work. You can chill out. And we can teach them all the signs so that they can be more calm and they can step out of that fear bubble and stop creating more fear through their actions. If more people hopped on this bus with us and started to co-create a better life for themselves, can you imagine what that would do to our planet? Everyone would be happier. Everyone would be more calm through the chaos. That's why I want 200 and whatever thousand subscribers or a million, because I want to teach, I want to help everybody know that they can trust in the universe and that it's got their back. So maybe you guys can help me manifest that. And then we can all help them together in the comment section too. Okay. Let's get some tarot, more tarot from the original Rider Wait tarot deck. What success are we having universe? Tell us who is experiencing success and what does it look like? 
watch will probably get like a king or queen, which is success and love. Okay. There we go. Oh, holy gosh. Don't be scared, guys. Don't be scared. Okay. Don't be scared. <laughs> this is a card of great change. So it's the tower card and it's somebody jumping out of a burning building after it was struck by lightning. So just to prepare you, <laughs> it seems really scary, but it's not. This is simply somebody changing a habit somebody changing a job, somebody leaving a partnership. And they're like, I'm done. I'm getting out of this burning building. It is so uncomfortable. It's hot. It's steamy. I want something better for myself. And sometimes the tower card is the universe doing it for us. So a lot of times when I get this card, it's usually after somebody had just gotten broken up with, or um, I don't know, maybe they just kind of like, they just woke up one day and was like, I'm done. I want better for myself. I'm going to choose better for myself. That's the energy of the tower. So I feel like when we get the tower and success together, it's going to be a successful ride. So this jumping out of the tower is not going to be painful. You're not going to fall and get hurt. You're actually going to fly and you're going to have something that's catching you, AKA the universe and you're going to succeed. It's going to be the best jumping out of that building and taking that leap of faith is going to be the best decision of your life. Because right on the other side of that jump is all of your money, is all of your love, is all of your freedom. And maybe like, maybe you've been in a partner. I've had so many clients, you guys that have been in partnerships with people where there was zero love. They are being intimate with each other and it is blank. It is dry. It is just, oh, there's zero love. Some people haven't had sex in like 10 years and they're married. That is not a partnership you should be in right now, especially with the way the world is. You need to be with your people. You need to be with your soul tribe because you are not going to survive with the way the world is going. You need your, you need your soul tribe, the people that love you and know how to love you and want to love you. And they will literally do anything for you. That's the kind of energy you're going to jump into is that passionate, that love, that kiss that you've been waiting for your whole life, that is out there for you. So if you're in a partnership where you don't have that solid magnetic connection with somebody, you're in the wrong spot and the universe might be moving you out this week, but it's going to result in success. You're finally going to get to be with the person that you're meant to be with. So change is coming. The tower represents change. Okay. Let's do another tarot and then we'll do the dream book. Whoa, did you guys just see that? And it's the dreamer. <laughs> Holy shit. Did you guys see that? I don't know if you saw that fly out. I'm gonna have to play this back. The dreamer, so this is the fool. A, a new start, trust yourself, push your fears aside and take the leap of faith. This is you jumping out of that tower saying, I am going for it. I am leaving this old life behind. I am going after what I want. And I'm not going to live in the misery of a burning tower anymore. And then we have two swords. So somebody has a decision to make. This is all about decisions. It says being unable or unwilling to make a decision, follow your own heart rather than trying to make others happy. Pretending there is no problem over analyzing a situation. Listen, if you are thinking a thought or if somebody in your life is thinking a thought that you should be doing something, that means you should do it because guess what? If you were in something that was meant to be, you wouldn't be thinking about leaving it, right? You wouldn't have the thoughts. I had my 15 year old niece in my Jeep the other day with her two friends. They were in the back seat and I was picking them up from their soccer, um, from their summer league game. And the two girls in the back were like talking about the boyfriend that she needs to break up with. They're like, Michelle, what would you do? And I was like, do you guys know? I was like, I do sessions on this. I coach people in relationships. They're like, you do? They're like, what should I do? I want to break up with my boyfriend, but I'm not sure. And I was like, well, you're having the thought, right? And she was like, yeah. I was like, if it was great, you probably wouldn't be having the thought, huh? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, it's not right for you. And she's like, I feel that. But she's like, I'm just staying because I don't want to hurt his feelings. So if this is you and that energy, if you're having the thought, 
and you're just staying there because you don't want to hurt somebody else's feelings or break their heart or, you know, have to have this whole upheaval of your life. You have to do it. You have to step aside, go through your fear and do it because in the end you will be so successful, not even successful in like a business way, but in your own body, your body won't be sick anymore. You won't be suffering. And actually the people around you will feel that too. They'll feel your joy. They'll feel your happiness. Sorry that I touch my hair so much when I'm doing readings. I think it's like a sensory thing. I notice it in all my videos. I'm like, Michelle, stop touching your hair. But what, like right now, as I'm doing it, I don't even know that I'm doing it. So I'm sorry, guys. I hope it doesn't bother anybody. Throat chakra. Okay. I love this. I love that this message came through. So again, with my throat chakra, huge tower moment coming, lots of change. Somebody is going to be the dreamer. They are going to be the fool. They're going to take the leap of faith. They, uh, the fool represents like stepping off the cliff and just being like, I don't care anymore. I choose myself and I'm not staying in this icky feeling any longer. I do not want to be burning alive. That's what it feels like. It feels like you're literally burning alive and you're keeping yourself from your greatest joy. That's right in front of you. And for those of you who I'm talking to, I'm very passionate about this right now. You know what's right in front of you that you want. I know you do. And you're just scared to take the step. You can do it. Trust me. I've taken many leaps of faith in my life and my hands were shaking and I'm sweating and I'd wake up with high anxiety because I'm like, oh no, how am I going to survive my life after I do this? Everything's falling apart. I've even like grabbed my sister's face after she took her leap of faith and got a divorce after 14 years with four kids. I grabbed her face and I said, it's your turn to be happy. You've been making everybody else happy for 14 years. It is your turn to be in a loving relationship with a man that loves you and will do for you and, and nurture you. I literally was grabbing her face as she was panicking during this divorce process because she was wanting to go back and she didn't want to mess her kids up and you know the stigma that people put on divorce. No, you're actually choosing yourself is teaching your kids the greatest lesson ever. It's teaching them how to love themselves and not stay in suffering to please other people. It's a beautiful gift. So remember, if you're taking a leap, you need support. You need somebody like me to grab your face and to say, you're okay. You are choosing you. I'm not going to let you go back to that. The universe is going to show up. It's going to bring you that new job. If you're in the waiting phase, if you just quit your job and you don't have a new one yet, you can trust that if you take that leap and free yourself from that toxicity, the universe will show up in just a couple short weeks with a new opportunity for you. You can go without money just for a little bit. Trust me, something will arrive. And if you're breaking up with somebody or leaving a marriage, whatever it is, it will be a little chaotic. It will feel like this for a little bit. But if you have support, somebody like me, maybe a brother, a sister, a family member to grab your face and to tell you that you're safe, and you're doing the right thing because this is for your heart, okay? And you're not going to regret it because you remember how painful it was to be in the burning building for so long and to be suffering, okay? So you have a decision to make. You know what you need to do. The universe is going to align it for you this week. So rest, change is coming. And spiritual maintenance. Remember, this is all for your spiritual growth. You might have lived other lifetimes and you were never willing to take this leap. And that's why you're here in this lifetime, still being challenged with the same lesson. If your lesson is shame, is guilt, is um, anger, frustration, we have all these different things we are called to learn in this lifetime. And if we don't learn it, we just keep jumping into different bodies and having to learn the same lessons over again. So I'm here to motivate you to make the change now. Do it. Be different. You don't want to end up sick and tired and not, a, not being a good person to the people that you love because you're miserable in your own body. All right, lovies, this was an intense reading. Let's get into the dream. Before I let you guys go, I have the complete book of dreams and dreaming. Look how thick this bad boy is. Holy cow. Okay. Okay. So I just had like a moment where I was like, am I recording this? <laughs> I didn't see the red button on. Okay. So we're going to pick a random page. Like I always do. Okay. If you've been dreaming about ladders, <laughs> 
I wonder if I should do that. Maybe I shouldn't do pick a page, but I'm going to read it anyway. It says the latter in dreams suggests how secure we feel in moving from one situation to another. We may need to make a considerable effort to reach a goal or take an opportunity. Nope, this is perfect. <laughs> Often this dream occurs during career changes and so has obvious connotations. If the rungs are broken, we can expect difficulty. If someone else is carrying the ladder, it could suggest that another person, perhaps a manager or colleague, has a part to play in our progression. Um, in a dream, the rungs of the ladder are often either seven or 12 in number. These beginning, these being the stages of growth towards spirituality. Wow. I was going to say with like ladders and steps, if you're dreaming about that, like falling down steps, tripping up steps, um, climbing up a ladder and maybe not being able to get to the top, that's usually spiritual evolution. You're making your way up. You're ascending. You are elevating. You're becoming more enlightened. All right, let's do water real fast. Because I feel like everybody always asks me, they're like, Michelle, what, is it dream what does it mean when I have a dream about that I'm drowning or that water's rushing over me? So let's do a water interpretation. Here we go. Okay. It says water is usually taken in dreams to symbolize all that is emotional and feminine. It is a mysterious substance given that it has the ability to flow through over and around objects. It has the quality of being able to wear any wear away anything which gets in the way. Water can also stand for the dreamers, dreamers potential and his ability or her ability to create a new life in response to his own inner urgings. And then they have a bunch of things. They have bathing, diving, drowning, floods, fountains, lakes. Um, here it says a lake like a pool can signify a stage of transition between the conscious and the spiritual self. Floods can represent chaotic, the chaotic side of us, which is usually uncontrollable. Drowning highlights our ability to push things into the unconscious only to have them emerge as a force which can overcome us. Diving represents going down into the unconscious or, or perhaps trying to find the parts of ourselves which we have suppressed. Um, bathing suggests purification. We have the sea or ocean. The sea very often represents cosmic consciousness. That is the original chaotic state from which all life emerges. Um, we have being immersed in water can suggest pregnancy or birth. Following water signifies peace and comfort. Rushing water can indicate passion. Deep water suggests the unconscious. Shallow water represents a lack of essential energy. Going down into water indicates a need to renew one's strength to go back to the beginning. Coming up out of water suggests a fresh start. And to be on the water, as in like a boat, can represent indecision or lack of emotional commitment. In the water but not moving can suggest inertia. Isn't this book awesome? And then there's deep water, which represents being out of depth or entering our own subconscious. Entering water suggests beginning something new. Wow, water is pretty. There's, there's so much content here about water. Rivers and streams always represent the dreamer's life and the way he or she is living it. Okay, that was a fun little dream interpretation. I figured I'd do something new. Next week for our weekly reading, I will totally be bringing this back out and we'll pick a different topic. Maybe we'll do like flying or storms or something cool and adventurous, weird things that we're always dreaming about. All right, lovies, we're going to wrap it up. This was a long one. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you have a great week. Do not fear the change that's coming. You know that it's going to be a good change for you. Everything's going to be okay. And this could even represent a partner of yours who you want to be your partner or somebody in your life might be going through a tower moment and they might be coming to you for some spiritual maintenance. They might be needing your help. So be grounded, make sure you rest, take care of yourself like the B card and remember your, your loved ones who have passed, they're with you and they're, they're gonna guide you the whole way. All right, lovies, like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.